Hello! It's Cynthia from Cheerful Nihilism or Cheerful Nihilism. Both of those pronunciations are technically correct. Technically correct is the best kind of correct, as far as I'm concerned. I'm still trying to make more content for the YouTube channel. I, I, like, I feel like I haven't really considered um, or thought of vlogging as like a job and it really is and I need to be more disciplined about it. Which kind of brings me to what I wanted to talk about today because self-discipline is an integral part of what I'm going to be talking about. Self-care. What? Discipline and self-care? Bitch, what are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So I saw an article um, on my, one of my friends posted it, no shade on you friend, because I know you're probably going to watch this video, but it just, it just made me think about a lot of things. So, and that's a good thing. Good. It's good. It's good to think about things. <laughs> um, but I, um, it was about self-care and it was a woman that was ranting about how self-care doesn't work because, you know, we need to have more support from our communities while as we do obviously need to have, you know, as mothers, you know, and families, we need to have more support from our community. Like that is definitely a true thing. Um, self-care does work. And what she was talking about was not self-care. So a lot of people think of self-care as like bubble baths and, you know, impulse buying and eating food that you like and even binge eating, whatever. Um, actually, a lot of the things that people talk about as self-care is not self-care at all. It's self-indulgence. Self-indulgence and self-care are not the same thing. Say it again! Self-indulgence and self-care are not the same thing. Not the same. Um, it, self, self-indulgence, like bubble baths and, you know, vacations and massages can be part of self-care. But the way I like to think of it is that it's the reward that you do for doing the work that is actually the self-care. So if self-care is not bubble baths and massages and manicures and pedicures, what is self-care? Self-care is doing the, the things that you need to do to create the life that you want or need that gives you like the least amount of suffering. Okay? So some examples of self-care that I think are like some of the most fundamental things that I learned. I did not learn how to take care of myself really until I was in my 30s. I, I'm, I'm really good at working hard and I'm really good at self-discipline. So that's kind of how I cruised through my, cruised. I, that's how I trudged through my life up until that point, like just making myself do shit. And I'm still good at that. I'm good at making myself eat stuff that tastes like I don't like uh, doing stuff that I don't like to do, but there's certain things I just, you can't muscle your way through life. There's some things you can muscle through, but not that. I have, I have two children. So having given birth twice without, um, pain medication, which I, I'm always going to say, I'm always going to fucking mention it. People were like, you're not going to get a medal for not, not getting an epidural. Okay, well, I'm going to fucking mention it at every enter every opportunity so people can be like, God damn, she's a badass. Yeah, you can muscle your way through that shit. That's a, there's a, that's a finite period of time. I, I generally, generally, I think I can get through almost anything if I know there's an ending to it. Like, life cannot be muscled through. So, it, it's an endurance race. It's not a sprint. So that means you have to do the work. And then um, it's funny because there was another person I was talking about briefly online about this with under my friend's article who was just like, uh, like frustrated and unhappy with the fact that like you're struggling and suffering so much and ultimately it still comes back on you. Like you are the person that has to do the work. Nobody's going to save you. And it does. It sucks. But it's also kind of like empowering in a way because my actions are the ground that I stand on. So I don't have to rely on anybody else to help me. I can, I can do it. Just have to do it. There's like, uh, the, there's a line in, in Bojack 
I think where he's jogging and he like he's running up a hill and he like passes out on the side of the hill and then um, a baboon comes up and says it gets easier but you have to do it every day that's the hard part so self-care what are some examples learning how to say no and setting boundaries very few people in my experience know how know how to have healthy emotional boundaries that's a skill that you have to learn it's not innate ah, like sometimes you have great parents that teach you how to have good boundaries but most of us did not ah, asking for help that's a big one for me I am fiercely independent I do things on my own. That's that's how I feel comfortable living my life. I don't like relying on other people. I don't like asking for help. So I have a lot of baggage around that and um, that's something I continually work on. Because I ha you have to. You have to learn how to ask for help when you're overwhelmed. You have to learn how to, that's part of, you know, life. It's part of being a human. Sitting down with a fucking Excel spreadsheet and writing a budget doing your taxes sucks but that self-care because you gotta fucking do that shit you gotta do it's stuff that you have to do so when you do it you feel better then after you do what you need to do after you put the work in then you can reward yourself with the bubble bath or the yummy snack or the vacation or whatever it is that massage, manicure, pedicure, facial, blah, 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 whatever it is like that, that hedonistic, uh, self-indulgent gratification component. That is a great way to motivate yourself to do the things that you need to do, but you got to fucking do it. That's it. So I see, you know, I see this, uh, there's like this commodification of self care because it's marketable. What can you, what, can, but you can't sell behavior. You can't sell lifestyle changes and choices. You can just sell accoutrement, you know, things to go along with it that might support you or help you or give you resources. But ultimately it's all, it's all on your shoulders. But like in, you know, in the world of buying and selling in, in the marketplace, there's this, you know, in, in marketing, there's been like a popularization of, self-care is like all these self-indulgent things that you can purchase and it's just not so and it's dangerous it's dangerous to promote that idea because ultimately like if you're giving yourself those hedonistic rewards but you're not doing the work you're rewarding yourself for not doing the work so you are actually perpetuating the circumstances that caused you to suffer and be miserable in the first place because you keep rewarding yourself for engaging in these really like hurtful negative behavior patterns. Having relationships with tox toxic people. Like, and then you feel shitty about yourself because that, you know, you're interacting with somebody that, you know, is not bringing you joy and is not well matched with your personality. So you, did, so you do self care, whatever, you treat yourself. And then you, you kind of reward yourself for that and then you keep doing it. No, 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 baby. No, no, no. That's not a good idea. Yeah. Oh, and that's another thing I want to mention. Self, another thing that can be considered self-care that is difficult to do is ending a toxic relationship with someone that you might love. It's, it's, it's possible to be deeply in love with someone who is toxic and not good for you. And it hurts to have to disengage from that person. It hurts because you wanna, you know, you wanna have like some kind of like crystal clear reason why you should end that relationship with that person rather than this like messy, uh, nebulous, just feeling that every time, you know, the amount of suffering and sadness that you feel because you're partnered with this person is just way more than what it needs to be. That's, that's a difficult thing to rationalize and explain to somebody. But yeah, ending toxic relationships with people that you are not well matched with, self-care. And it hurts and it sucks, but it's something you have to do sometimes. So um, and, uh, the way that I think about self-care a lot is that I'm reparenting myself. Because, you know, my family of origin and my parents didn't necessarily give me those tools and no shade on them. That's just what happened. It is what it is working with what is happening now very pragmatic so i might not have learned those things 
and I gotta learn it now and I gotta put it into practice so I can take care of myself and create what I, you know, may live a life that I am happy living. Maybe not even happy, happy isn't even a good word for it, that I am content to be in. So um, that's what I wanted to say about that. Thank you for listening. Um, I'll see you again soon. See you later. Bye.